So, yeah, this one's a little wild. I was reading Jacob's article. 2025, the year Swift UI died. And at first I kind of laughed because, right? The title's super clickbait, but the more I read, the more I realized he's actually hitting on something I've felt for a while. The ground is shifting under us, and honestly, as a solo dev in 2026, the whole which UI framework should you use debate suddenly means something totally different than it did even a year ago, especially now that we're building with AI in the mix. Claude, Cursor, uh, Codex, all these agents writing code with us or for us. So what, what does it actually mean for our workflow? Just real quick, um, I'm Daniel. I've been living in the iOS trenches for over eight years, started out freelancing, working with clients, bouncing between all sorts of projects. But after Dub Dub 25, I went all in on solo dev life. Since then, I've crafted over 10 of my own apps, building a real solo app studio, multiple products, shared systems, uh, long-term thinking, started building everything in public. And honestly, Right now, pretty much all my energy goes into making this solo studio into something that lasts, scales up, and supports me as a business for the future. And yeah, I'm sharing all of that on Crafters Lab. It isn't just another tutorial site or some AI clone farm. This is my actual home base. It's for solo devs who want to use AI like a real teammate, not like a vending machine. And yeah, if you're still on Patreon, massive thanks. But heads up. Everything's have moved over to crafterslab.dev. Come be part of the crew. Let's get this out there. The big promise of Swift UI was always speed. You know, that moment in 2020 where you'd switch from UI kit and suddenly you're shipping new screens in half the time, all because Swift UI just got out of your way. Less boilerplate, less headache, just build and ship. I lived off that energy, and honestly, it's what made me stick with Swift UI through all the missing APIs and weird layout bugs. But Jacob's point, and he nails it here, is that in 2025, AI agents kind of stole that show. The argument used to be UI kit is a slog, it's too much typing, too much code to manage. But with Claude or Codex or Cursor in your stack, that whole pain point just disappeared if the only reason you were using Swift UI was because UI kit took too long to write by hand well now you just have the agent spit out the boilerplate and move on the speed advantage is gone and honestly that messes with your head as a solo dev because now the real question isn't which is faster to write but which actually fits my app and which will the agent maintain better so the first real skill You got to get comfortable letting go of speed as your North Star and instead focus on what makes your app actually work for users. And for us solo folks, that means being way more intentional about which framework fits the shape of your app, not just how quickly you can scaffold a feature. It's a weird shift, feels like a loss at first, but it's also a kind of freedom. You're not chained to Swift UI just because UI kit used to be slow. Here's where things get a little uncomfortable. Jacob brings up performance. And um, yeah, Swift UI has always had a bit of a reputation. Animations sometimes feel a little off. Heavy screens can get janky. And the second you step into anything more demanding, like complex lists, big data, crazy animation layers, UI kit just runs circles around Swift UI. And for the last few years, Most of us just kind of shrugged and said, well, it's the price you pay for moving fast. But now with agents writing code and refactoring for us, you can't hide behind that excuse. The tooling is here. The agent will happily churn out a UI kit version if you ask for it. Suddenly, performance isn't something only the big teams care about. If you want to build something that actually feels like iOS and you want your agent to do the heavy lifting, you have to actually care about where the frameworks hit their limits. So, right, the next solo dev skill, learn to judge, honestly and early, where Swift UI is enough and where it's not. There's no shame in mixing and matching now. I'm not saying go all in on UI kit, but it's not heresy to to have a UI kit heavy screen where you need raw speed and let the agent manage the glue code. It's less about dogma more about just getting your app to feel right and honestly it's kind of freeing once you accept that 
the AI is here to smooth over the busy work and you can actually think about what, what feels best for your users, not just what's trendy on Twitter. Okay, so this is the bit where Jacob's take really hit home for me. It's easy to let the AI write everything. Just, hey, Claude, rebuild this screen and UI kit and boom, it's done. Feels like magic. But then you remember, you're still the one maintaining this code base. If you hated UI kit before, letting the agent write it doesn't make those pain points go away. You're still living with the result, still debugging, still on the hook for that legacy code especially once the agent leaves some weird auto-generated uh, constraint bug that makes no sense in production. So right, the last skill that matters for solo devs in 2025, ownership. You can't just outsource tech debt to your agent. You have to live in the code base after the build is over. Pick the stack you actually want to maintain, not just the one the AI can build fastest. Trust me, it's a rough day when you inherit 2,000 lines of UI kit the agent wrote and you never wanted to uh, touch a constraint again, even if the agent could write the whole app and UI kit for you, ask yourself, do I want to own this next year? Or will this just make me hate opening Xcode? Honestly, this is the meta skill in the AI era, not just shipping fast, not just picking frameworks, but making decisions that your future self will thank you for. It's the do I want to live in this code base? Question. And it's never mattered more. You got to set the bar, not the agent. So yeah, if you're still hanging out here with me, honestly, you're a legend. No joke. It's kind of wild, right? The AI didn't kill Swift UI. It just, I don't know, killed the old reasons for picking it. The speed race? Yeah, that's over. Now it's all about experience, performance, and honestly, what you actually want to own a year from now. If you're out here building solo and you're using AI tools in your stack, that's just the new normal. And, you know, I actually think that's a good thing because it means you finally get to focus on the stuff that matters to you, not just whatever's fastest for a bot to spit out. And look, if you're kind of tired of bouncing from tool to tool, burning tokens, or you're just feeling stuck in the whole agent roulette cycle, maybe this is the moment to try something new, or at least dig a little deeper. And yeah, check out crafterslab.dev. It's not just some tutorial dump. It's not another AI clone farm. It's honestly my home base. I built it for solo devs who treat AI like a real teammate, not just a button you smash when you're stuck. And you know, it's packed. You get full walkthroughs, like um, actual short video tutorials, notes from the trenches, and yeah, straight up downloadable zips you can drop right into your project. The real magic is in the crew. Members get to actually riff in the comments, ask follow-ups, go back and forth. And yeah, that's just the start because the real core is the Notion team spaces, my live playbook, the real command center, all the dashboards for every app, agentready.md files, every weird prompt library, all the exact systems I use to keep my solo workflow moving with AI. There's a full curated Swift and Swift UI library in there too. Not just random files, but the actual stuff I use to fine tune models and build out my own custom MCPs for Claude code, for cursor, all of it. If you wanna get your hands on the resources I actually rely on day to day, it's all sitting there not just for watching, but for remixing into your own stack. And then, of course, there's Ops Lab. That's honestly my favorite part. It's where I build and share all my AI agent systems, Notion templates, the workflows, automations, all wired up and ready for you to copy, tweak, totally break, and make your own. The whole point is to keep the the indie stack connected so you don't feel like you're building in a silo even if you're solo at the keyboard. So yeah, if you want to get in before it gets busy and prices start moving, now's kind of the sweet spot. The crew's still small, super hands-on, and honestly, it feels way more like a behind-the-scenes dev lounge than some giant faceless forum. Would love to see you in there, swap some stories, maybe even learn something from what you're building next. All right, that's it for me. Keep crafting, keep shipping. Peace.